Hello, this is Ishveen. In this video, I'll be solving paper 2 variant 1, May June 2020, 9700 biology. Question 1, figure 1.1 shows 5 biological molecules. So you have A, B, C, D, and E. A, state the name of the bond in molecule A indicated by the arrow. So molecule A is a disaccharide with a glycosidic bond between the two monosaccharides. B, the molecule B is described as a saturated fatty acid. State why molecule B is described as a saturated fatty acid. It's a saturated fatty acid because there are no carbon-carbon double bonds in the fatty acid tail. C, molecule D is a polymer. State the name of the monomer that is used to synthesize this polymer. So um, D is this polymer. And as you can see, the CH2OH group of each monomer of this polymer is uh, rotated 180 degrees uh, on every alternate monomer. That means it is a cellulose molecule made up of beta glucose. D state the letter of the molecule that could be formed during the hydrolysis of a polypeptide. Polypeptide breaking a polypeptide would mean breaking it down into either smaller peptides or breaking it down to single amino acids and since we do not have uh, amino acids on their own that would not be an option but we do have these two amino acids which could be the result of hydrolysis of a polypeptide so this is c e state the letter of the molecule that forms part of the cell surface membrane of eukaryotic cells so that would be um this phospholipid over here If uh, molecule A and C dissolve in water, B does not dissolve in water. Explain why A and C dissolve in water, but B does not dissolve in water. B is a fatty acid, so this is hydrophobic, which makes it insoluble in water, whereas A is a polar molecule or hydrophilic, and so is C, which make A and C soluble in water. Two figure 2.1 shows some stages of the cell cycle in the meristematic tissue in the root tip of a plant three stages of three of these stages p q and r are identified in table 2.1 a complete the table 2.1 by stating one feature visible in figure 2.1 that is used to identify each stage so starting with p we have the stage of cell cycle which is prophase and in prophase the chromatin condenses to form uh, chromosomes that are visible and that is one feature which you can mention over here, Q shows metaphase of mitosis because in Q, in cell Q, the chromosomes are aligned along the equator of the spindle, and R shows interphase, which is this, uh, which is the stage in cell cycle that occurs before mitosis, and that means the nucleus would be entirely intact without uh, with the nuclear envelope and the nucleosome in the nucleus. And that is shown in cell R over here. This uh, smaller circle, which is darker, represents the nucleolus, which means cell R is going through interphase of the cell cycle. B1, draw a label diagram to show one chromosome at metaphase of mitosis. On the chromosome you have drawn, add labels to show the position of a telomere, a chromatid, and the centromere. So uh, at metaphase, the, chromo the sister chromatids are not separated yet. So you'd have to draw a chromosome with two sister chromatids. With a centromere in the center that holds together the sister chromatids. So here we have the centromere. This is a chromatid. You can label either of the two and the telomere position could be a, um, any tip of the top or bottom tip of either of the two chromatids to state the type of protein that is associated with dna in chromosome those are histone proteins three describe how the spindle is involved during the process of mitosis so the spindle is essentially required for the uh, separation of chromatids. 
So spindle starts building during prophase of mitosis as centrioles move to polar uh, ends of nucleus and they connect to the centromere of each chromatid of each of the two chromatids in a chromosome and then they pull them apart by um, shortening their length from each side so from centromere and from centrioles which forms two new nuclei in telophase. Three, the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is composed of two identical polypeptide chains. A students investigated the activity of two forms of G6PD, J and K at different concentrations of substrate. K is a form of the enzyme that results from a mutation that changes one amino acid in the polypeptide and the results are shown in figure 3.1. And uh, figure 3.1 shows that as you increase the substrate concentration, the rate of reaction increases up to a certain limit and then remains constant. It also shows that at all substrate concentration, the rate of reaction of K is lower than that of J. That means the affinity for substrate in enzyme K is lower than that in J. So the change in amino acid must have caused some change in the shape of active site of K which resulted in its lower rate of reaction. One, use figure 3.1 to complete the, uh, table 3.1 by stating the maximum velocity and the michaelis menten constant for enzymes J and K and state their units. So the maximum velocity would be the maximum rate of reaction and therefore it has the units micromole per minute and the Michaelis Menten constant would be the substrate concentration for which half of the enzyme's active sites are occupied, or in other words, half of the maximum the substrate concentration, which gives half of the maximum enzyme velocity, which is why it uh, has the units of millimole per dm cube. All right, let's look at the maximum velocity of J, which is this level line over here, and that is. 60 and for k it is 50 uh, micromole per minute as for the michaelis menten constant we need to find out the the half of the maximum velocity for j that would be 30 and its corresponding substrate value which when you use the graph you find that value to be 0 0.2 and the half of the half of the Vmax of K would be 25, which is over here, and that also corresponds to 0 0.2 substrate concentration. With reference to figure 3.1 and table 3.1, describe the effect of mutation on the activity of G6PD and suggest an explanation for this. All right, in this question for the description part, you can first off mention the changes that have occurred and use some um, data from the graph which you and, the, and then and you can also quote some data from the graph for the rest of, of the answer you can explain why that happens so obviously as we discussed earlier the rate of reaction using k decreases and that happens over all of the substrate range even after increasing the substrate concentration k has a lower rate of reaction and then um, I'm going to use the value 1.6 millimole per dm cube of substrate concentration, which gives the maximum uh, well, maximum rate of reaction. In K, it gives 50 micromole per minute of reaction, whereas J gives 60 micromole per minute of rate of reaction. So that would score you two marks, and then you can explain why that happens. So the change in amino acid, change in amino acid causes change in shape of active site and as a result K has lower affinity for its substrate which means in any given time interval fewer enzyme substrate complex form which lead to a lower rate of reaction. In certain conditions G6PD may also exist as four identical polypeptide chains rather than two identical polypeptide chains. Explain why both of these types of G6PD have all four levels of protein structure. So that would include primary, secondary, tertiary, 
and quaternary. Um, so primary would mean they all of them have a sequence of amino acid. They have uh, hydrogen bonds holding 3D, uh, 3D shape, which holds their structure. And all of them consist of more than one polypeptide. And so they have all of primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures. Four, figure 4.1 shows the site of gas exchange in the mammalian lung. So this is an alveoli with the capillary with a capillary next to it. You have red blood cells entering and leaving the cells where X would have um, deoxygenated red blood cells carrying um, hemoglobinic acid, whereas blood leaving at Y would be oxygenated, so it would carry um, oxyhemoglobin. A state 2 is in which carbon dioxide is transported. So out of all of the carbon dioxide, 85% of carbon dioxide dissolves, um, is present in the form of uh, hydrogen carbonate ions that forms after carbon dioxide dissolves in water to form hydrogen carbonate, which then dissociates to form the ion. And 5% of carbon dioxide remains dissolved in the plasma, so it does not enter red blood cells. And the rest of the 10% of carbon dioxide re uh, reacts with the terminal amine groups of hemoglobin to form carbaminohemoglobin. Out of the three, you only have to write two. B table 4.1 shows the partial pressures of oxygen and carbon dioxide at locations W, X, and Y in figure 4.1. All right. So the greatest partial, partial pressure of oxygen is in W, which is the alveoli, because inhaled air contains the greatest amount of oxygen. X, which is carrying deoxygenated blood, has the least amount of oxygen. So oxygen would diffuse down its concentration gradient from a region of higher concentration to lower concentration from alveoli to uh, red blood cells. After being oxygenated, the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood rises. Similarly, carbon dioxide is present in the least amount in W, so inhaled air has the least amount of carbon dioxide, whereas it is present in the greatest count, uh, quantity in the blood that is coming from all over the body. And so carbon dioxide would also diffuse down the concentration gradient from cells in X to alveoli to be exhaled. Because of this, partial pressure of carbon dioxide decreases when blood leaves the alveoli at Y. With reference to figure 4.1 and table 4.1, describe the changes that occur as blood flows from X to Y. So here you can describe the diffusion uh, that occurs as I've mentioned before. And you can also describe the pathway that the gases go through during their diffusion, which would be crossing the walls of alveoli, which is squamous, made of squamous epithelium, and the wall of capillary, which is endothelium. See, elastic fibers are present in tissues at the site of gas exchange in the lungs. Describe the roles of elastic fibers in the gas exchange system and in cardiovascular system. So starting with elastic fibers and gas exchange, they are found in alveoli, trachea, bronchi, and the bronchioles. So when you inhale, the elastic fibers would expand and allow maximum volume of air inside. Especially in alveoli, they would uh, allow maximum volume of, of air inside to allow maximum gas exchange between the red blood cells in the capillaries neighboring the alveoli and the air inside alveoli. And in cardiovascular system, the elastic fibers are found in the most abundant form in, in the most abundant amount in arteries. So we'd focus on that in our answer. And they allow the arteries to expand when the pressure increases with pulse as uh, blood is pumped out of heart. The elastic fibers also allow the arteries to recoil when the blood pressure decreases with each pulse. So that is the role of elastic fibers in the two systems. The scientists in Peru investigated the effect of moving from sea level to high altitude on the composition of blood. The scientists studied 10 students. Each student had lived at sea level since birth 
and moved to live in Andes at a height of uh, 4,500 meters above sea level. The scientists took a sample of blood from each student before they moved to live at high altitude. The scientists further took um, blood samples at intervals after the student had moved to high altitude. The relative pro proportion of red blood cells in plasma in each sample was determined. The total volume of blood for each student was also determined at each sampling time. As the students were all of different body mass, the total volumes were converted to a volume per kg of body mass. Figure 4.2 shows for each sampling time the, the mean volume of blood per kg of body mass and the proportion of red blood cells in plasma. So in, a, in this histogram, you have bars which represent the multiple time intervals after having moved to high altitudes and the composition of blood and, relate, and also relates that with the uh, body mass of each of the students. One, the percentage of mean blood volume that is represented by red blood cells for the sample taken at sea level is 48%. So they are basically telling you that 48% of the blood of a student at sea level is made up of red blood cells. Calculate the percentage of mean blood volume that is, that is represented by red blood cells at 5 to 6 months after living at high altitude. Show your working and give your answer to the nearest whole number. So the composition of red blood cells that makes up the uh, total blood after having moved for 5 to 6 months at high altitudes. For that you need to have the amount of red blood cells and the total amount of blood so that would be red blood cells the amount of red blood cells is which um, corresponds to 50 centimeter cube per gram and the total volume of blood uh, for the five to six time interval so each small box over here reads for two units so you have 82 4 and 6 86 uh, centimeter cube per kg of total volume of blood so you divide the um, amount of red blood cells with the total volume of blood and multiply it with, with 100 to calculate a, the answer as a percentage describe and explain the results in figure so it's supposed to explain how uh, moving at altitudes affects the percentage composition of blood and explain why that happens so as you can see, the mean volume of blood increases overall generally as you uh, go up, except for the time interval between uh, remaining at sea level in one to two months. Similarly, the amount of red blood cells also increases, except for the time when it decreases from uh, between seven to two, seven to eight months and 12 months. You can mention that and then uh, for the rest of your answer, you're supposed to explain why. And at higher altitudes, the partial pressure of uh, oxygen in the air is lower, which means partial pressure of oxygen in air that enters the alveoli is also lower. And that means the percentage saturation of red, red blood cells with oxygen decreases. And as a result, the body does not receive sufficient amount of oxygen for aerobic respiration. And a greater number of red blood cells are synthesized. So say a certain micrograms of red blood cell, cells pass through capillaries in lungs in a certain interval of time. After increasing the number of red blood cells uh, in the same volume of blood that in the same volume of blood plasma, it means that for same amount of time, more red blood cells are passing through the capillaries neighbor, uh, next to uh, alveoli, which means that more oxygen is taken up from the alveoli into the red blood cells and is therefore supplied to the uh, cells of the body. Five, the vaccine used to control tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is known as Bacillus calmet-gorin. The vaccine contains live bacteria that have been selected so that they do not cause disease in humans. Figure 5.1 shows a macrophage that is in the process of engulfing the bacteria in the vaccine. A1 named the pathogen that causes TB, that would be Mycobacterium tuberculosis. To describe how this pathogen is transmitted, it is transmit it can be transmitted when infected person coughs or sneezes, releasing liquid droplets into the air, 
which would be inhaled by an uninfected person. We describe the events that occur in the body after the macrophage has engulfed the bacteria until the production of uh, antibodies in response to the BCG vaccine. So antibody production is the response of lymphocytes. So you're supposed to, in your answer, you're supposed to link the action of macrophages to that of um, lymphocytes. So after macrophages have engulfed bacteria, the lysosomes in macrophages would digest the cell wall of bacteria to expose their antigens and so that the antigens form a part of the cell surface membrane of macrophage. And that would be used for antigen representation, which would attract um, lymphocytes and B, lymphoc B lymphocytes with receptors complementary to these antigens on the surface of uh, macrophage would be attracted and they would be stimulated to form plasma cells and by go undergoing clonal selection and expansion and then secreting antibodies. Similarly, um, helper T cells could also secrete cytokines that would stimulate B cells to form uh, plasma cells faster and therefore secrete antibodies faster. C vaccines such as BCG stimulate the formation of memory cells. Explain the role of memory cells in the body's defense against TB pathogen. Because memory cells remain in the body for uh, a long period of time, they provide long-term immunity. So the person would not experience the symptoms of the same uh, disease if a particular pathogen re-enters the body after having infected the person who has recovered from it. And uh, due to as a result of uh, formation of memory cells during secondary response, if the pathogen enters the body again, the same pathogen, the pathogen having the same antigens, um, the formation of antibodies would be uh, much faster than that in primary response, and the antibodies would also be synthesized in a much higher quantity. D suggests why vaccination with BCG has not yet eradicated TB. In your answer, you can explain general reasons for um, vaccines not being successful. And uh, you can also include any anything which would be specific to the BCG vaccine or the uh, TB pathogen. Uh, the pathogen that causes TB is, acts as a parasite, so it lives inside human cells. As a, as a result of that, its antigens are concealed from antibodies, so they are not able to um, kill those pathogens that are present in the host cells, which, which could make the vaccine ineffective. And as for the general reasons, vaccine, vaccines can be made unsuccessful when um, a population does not receive herd immunity so those who are who have not been vaccinated can still catch uh, the disease can get infected and they can act as reserve, uh, reservoirs of infection and after traveling to somewhere or acting as immigrants they travel somewhere where other people the population has not been vaccinated either they can easily transmit the pathogen and can cause the disease in people who have not been vaccinated or in areas where uh, herd immunity has not been achieved. Six, figure 6.1 shows the formation of a polypeptide during translation in a eukaryotic cell. So you have the mRNA, the ribosome and a transfer RNA as well and transfer RNA, RNA is carrying their particular amino acids. A, name the purine bases shown in figure 6.1. So the uh, adenine and guanine are the purine bases which are present, which are also present in uh, the bases in the figure. B, state the name given to the group of three bases found at J on a tRNA molecule. So a group of bases on a tRNA molecule that binds with a group of bases on the mRNA would be an anticodon. C, identify the bases at J. So G binds, the bases on J have to be complementary to the bases on mRNA uh, where it's uh, going to form hydrogen bonds. So G would bind with T. The complementary base of U is A and C of, and that of C is G. So you have C, A and G. D state how the three bases at J on tRNA interact with the bases on mRNA. Hydrogen bonds form between complementary bases.
and that is it we are done with this paper thank you for watching